Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Good evening. Um, let me just check one thing real quick. Uh, Mr. Wizard, are we on? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Conway. The town owes you a, a, a lot of gratitude for all the work you do. Okay, that brings us to item number two, executive session. Hearing from the membership, uh, we're going to be skipping that item. If we do need to have one when we get to one of the other items, I will recognize it, uh, a motion at that time, but otherwise it, uh, I think we're gonna move along without that. That brings us to item number three. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Norton. I'd like to move the um, NW2 be changed to a non-routine item. I have a motion to make a routine item a non-routine item. Do I have a second? I would second that. Seconded by Mr. Raymer. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That motion is carried. That brings us to item number, our no, no. first. I am in NW2. That brings us to NW2, and with that, I would call on the chair of the Budget Committee, Mr. Lash. Good evening. Uh, the Budget Committee took up item NW2 at the time it was uh, identified as $225,000 to uh, reallocate some money around some accounts. Uh, it's not, an, as everybody here knows, not unusual at the end of the year to move some money from one account to another. Uh, that was not intended to increase the appropriations for the Witherill and it was approved by the entire committee at the time. Uh, subsequently, uh, there was a need to move $260,000 of additional funds, and I'll let someone else address that, seeing that it was not discussed at the committee. Okay, we didn't have another committee. Um, on that increase, Mr. Simon is here from the federal report. If you'd like to... Good evening. So this this money represents the 2.5% increase in salary for the Teamsters and Lyona for the amount we expect to pay in fiscal year 17 for the salary for the contract that is yet to be settled. So we need to, in which we budgeted this money, and we need to encumber the money in order to make sure that when the contract gets settled, when it will one day, uh, we have the money to pay it. So as I understand that, what will happen is because the contract hasn't settled, you'll encumber these as of June 30. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. 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 It's very okay. straightforward. All departments are doing this. Because the Teamsters had and haven't settled yet. And Layuna. Further questions? And we're the only ones before you because everybody else has enough money in their 100s to encumber the money without coming before you. Okay. Mr. Raymer? What did you mean, Mr. Simon, when you said a moment ago that you budgeted the money but you haven't encumbered it? What do you mean when you say you budgeted the money? That you're saying that we the 260 was in your existing budget? For fiscal 17, yes. An expected salary increase. Well, then I'm not understanding. Why are we transferring these dollars to the salary line now if those dollars are already in the salary line as we budgeted for fiscal 17? Because we spent them. I'm not understanding that either. Over budget. Which part? Should I be more clear? Uh, somebody needs to be more so clear. So we budgeted Jeffrey a certain amount of money <laughs> that included a 2.5% increase which was $280,000, 260,000? 260, I think that's it. So we budgeted that, that was in the 100 line. But through the year- You've spent it on something else? Or we on spent it on salaries. that, yes. So, so, so uh, this isn't a question of um, uh, ad addressing the um, uh, accrued benefit that may be due these employees based upon the labor agreement. This is a question of you're having budgeted the money to cover that increase, but in the intervening months, you spent that on other salary requirements. Yes. And now, because I've spent that money, 
I have money in other places in my budget to which I'm now transferring it into the 100s. Well, that money in the other places was always in the other places. That had nothing to do with whether or not you spent these dollars on salary. What do you want me to say? I think you've already said it. I think we're understanding now what it was all about. Right. I, could, I, I don't know how long you want me to talk, and I'll wait for other questions. So I just, you know, um, looking at available budget, that is insufficient? I mean, you did budget, I believe the budget was at 2.5%, correct, for the salary accounts, even though you haven't actually spent that amount. What's the Wait, question? You budgeted your, your regular salaries at, at basically a 2.5% increase. increase. And so currently, there, there appears to be available budget of a million three sixty two, which should be more than sufficient to cover this amount, correct? To to cover your salaries for the remainder of the year? There's enough money. I just, I'm not quite sure what you're asking me, but I'll say this: there's enough money in our budget in total to cover all of our expenses, and I believe to encumber the money that's due the Teamsters and Lahuna and I believe to return some money to the town. So, you know, when I talked to Roland earlier, I believe he said that there were some money perhaps that were charged here for overtime that should not have been charged into this account for overtime. Is that correct? Are you asking me? Yes, I'm asking you, is that? If to the 100 line, <coughs> money that may resent, represent overtime got charged to that line? Yes, got charged to the regular salary That is line. a possibility. Okay, thank you, Larry. Strong possibility. Thank you, Larry. So to follow up on that question, how much do you estimate was charged to overtime in that line? $280,000. So in the 100 line, there was 280 overtime. And then in the overtime, there's 200. So it's an incremental 480. I'm getting lost a bit in the numbers here. An incremental almost half million dollars of overtime versus budget. About oh, 450,000. Yeah, 450,000. So that goes back to the questions that I had last week, which I think I followed up with an email to you, Larry, which going back to the budget for fiscal 17, um, the BET and the RTM approved the 8.2 part-time, full-time equivalents in fiscal 17, the goal of which was to reduce overtime. And, you know, the increase in part-time staffing was reflected in the TOO as well as in the temporary salaries line that was increased by $780,000. Um, and the fiscal 16 budget had been for a million dollars for overtime and holiday pay, but actually Nathaniel Witherell came in for an interim, or well, I think it was actually a transfer in April 2016 for additional overtime. I, I think, you know, I'm really getting lost as to sort of what are the real overtime numbers and what's happening, I mean, bottom line. I, I understand your confusion. I share some of the same confusion. There apparently were, when ADP went into effect, there were some changes in the way money money. Salaries and overtime were coded to different line items. And I don't think that we understood that we at Nathaniel Witherall understood that correctly, that some overtime was in fact going to the 100s. Um, I can't answer all your questions tonight because they've been very helpful though in understanding what I don't understand. Um, and I am concerned about the amount of overtime now in particular, knowing that we're, I'm not getting necessarily an accurate picture of it. Uh, and I do appreciate your questions. I unfortunately don't think I could provide you with all the answers. Um, I would be more than happy to follow up at some point. <laughs> maybe Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be honest with you. So, so for the <coughs> oh, thank you so much. So things reflect. So. There's a deficiency in the 100 and the 600 major object code. Nathaniel Willow is transferring from the 300, 700, and 200 major object code 
into those to balance out for the year. I understand that. I guess my question for Chris is the budget that's just been approved, are, you, are these changes recognized in that budget going forward? Whenever we do transfers from a department, with, it always leads to a sort of a what I call budget cleanup, getting the actual costs where they belong in the right categories. Do, do these changes, are they represented in the new budget? Well, that's, 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 that's been our goal. Our goal last year we didn't have part-time people out of the state. Our goal this year would be an overtime caught up so we then therefore properly reflected in next year's budget. Uh, in light of Okay. Just, just to make sure I heard you correctly, did you say salaries, um, the salary line is uh, over budgeted or has more budget than you need or no? It's overcharged. Next year, fiscal 18. Fiscal 18. No, we, we believe next, fiscal, year, fiscal 18 salary line is correct, save for this, the way that things are being charged into that line, this one account. Whether or not that gets changed or not, I don't know, but the actual budgeting for the full-time employees of literal it would be correct for next year. But there may be an additional charge going properly into that line item that could put that, that over budget for next year. Right, and my, my question was not on the overtime piece, it's just on salary. So you didn't accrue this year's labor sediments into next year's budget. It was budgeted this year. It it's just, so there wasn't it, enough there. That's why it was encumbered. Right, and this thank all, you. The genesis of this was, after last Tuesday's meeting, realizing that all departments we're, we're being asked to encumber enough money at the end of this year, so we're spending this year's money in the fall whenever the contract settles. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Ms. Hoberliner? Mr. Simon, I have two questions. The first is to you and to Mr. Alexander as to when you learned that over time, roughly $280,000 of which was charged to the 100 line, hundreds line. Yeah, so you did not know before that time that there were some in, inappropriately coded no. withdrawals or, no. okay. It wasn't withdrawals, it's when the ADP system pays right. people. Right, so it has to come out of somewhere. I'm using withdrawal colloquially, so charge back, whatever, however you and like And remember, to for it. our budget, we don't have money charged to the holiday pay line. It goes to either regular salaries or overtime. So we have money in that line, but it's, no, it's not charged there. And money in, the, in the holiday pay it. line, you mean? Right. But it's not, okay. Um, the second question has to do with the two items that you're transferring, the larger items where you're transferring, or I guess three, four, from the healthcare, medical, surgical, lab supply, custodial, and household supply, and again, I guess, another lab supply. Um, can you talk a little bit about why your budget is so, um, there's such a large differential between your budget and your actual so that you find yourself with so much money? Or do you anticipate just holding off on whatever those expenditures are until next year when we replenish those lines? Well, there's two pieces. So the healthcare is one that would Supply categories are very, frankly, right, supplies that you look for year over year are fairly unpredictable. It depends on a big portion about the medical necessities and the, uh, the, the, the residents that are in the facility. Supply costs run the whole gamut depending upon what the needs are at that time. So it's a, it's a lumpy category, lumpy expense category. Uh, looking at this year, the supply costs for medical surgeon lab as well as custodial supplies have to be less than they were previous years. 
much money. Um, and it's really as simple as that. And I think that next year it probably will be more in line with uh, what we budgeted, but this is an under expense item. Ms. Tarkington, yeah, just, Mr. Norton. Mr. So Mr. can you just help me with, in the end here, how much is going to be journal vouchered from the nursing full-time line? It's the amount here plus the additional amount, the difference between what your sum of overtime and holiday pay plus the new amount we're going to approve because we learned last Tuesday you were short in that amount by another 10 or 15 thousand, which I think you gave me a number like a million two seventy versus a million two sixty, whatever that it totaled. So what 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 in the end will be journal vouchered from the nursing full time line to the um, nursing overtime line? We don't journal voucher within major object codes. Okay. Well, I think Roland had used that word, but maybe we'll use something else earlier. How how are we going to transfer those, Roland? Well, if we want to transfer the the uh, overtime that's in the regular salary line, we'd simply journal voucher to make it a correcting journal entry okay. into the overtime line. But so it's not going to change what, the major object code. What is the sum of between what you're requesting tonight and what was the differential? Because you told us that some amount needed was greater than the amount approved last Tuesday night. I mean, that was remember what, the sum. Whatever you gave is us on was, the the only thing we're doing is transferring what's on the blue sheet. Okay. Right, and, but if you remember, the sum of nursing overtime plus the holiday pay plus the new amount you had was not the total of what you needed. Okay, we'll, we'll do this offline. Thank you. Mr. Norton, followed by Ms. Pricer. Um, Larry, if you were using correctly the holiday pay budget line, would this problem exist? Um, yes. How much? What were the differential? I don't think the holiday pay enters into the discussion at all because you still have a shortfall. Yeah, but are you adequately or correctly charging for ho to holiday pay people who are working on maybe the 25 holidays that you're open that the rest of the town is not? I think it's 12 holidays. Well, the day after Thanksgiving? And I think the town has 12 holidays. We pay overtime for the same 12 holidays. I don't, I, I'm going to wait till all the questions are done and then I'm going to make some comments or I can make the comments now. So for those of you that have a longer memory than others, the budget used to be run before Chris got here and when I was on the BET, they run, were done by Ray Augustine and they were designed not to be very transparent. Uh, he would put a lot of money into fixed charges where no one would ever look and then would transfer it into all of the uh, line items at the end of the year as needed. And everybody was happy, there was enough money, the money got paid out and nobody really questioned. Then in an effort to make the budgeting more transparent, one, to the people in Nathaniel Witherall, so you could at least hold them accountable, and two, to you, and three, to the RTM, you know, we've discovered, actually, and then, and in between, we had ADP startup, which changed some of the parameters. And in between all of that, there are gaps in our ability to budget correctly. There are things we miss. Um, there are things that get charged to the wrong line, such as some overtime gets charged to the 100 lines. We may have enough money in another line item, but they're not being charged correctly. And so managing the dollar amount, managing the process is still proving difficult because if you can't budget correctly, it's very hard to hold people accountable. So getting a handle over around the overtime in particular and the part-time people, the full-time people should be pretty simple because you have a salary line, but you need to make sure you budget for everything that goes with full-time people, differentials. Anything that belongs to a full-time salary has to be in that 100 line. The overtime and the part, and the real answer, I believe, to your question about adding more part-time people was that even though they increased that line item, they were unable to reduce overtime. Now the question is why? Is it because we have more admissions? Is it because we're unable to hire full-time people? Is it because we have vacancies? Is it because people call out more often? 
it's not clear, but I have to agree with people's perception that overtime needs a lot of examination as to how to better, I don't like to use this expression, but how we can manage the cost better, which is different than saying it's out of control. But I think it could be managed better and I just remind everybody how difficult it is to run a nursing home. You have full-time staff of 158 people, which isn't changing. You try to supplement the staff with part-time people, which has the following two constraints. A part-time person cannot work more than 40, 1,000 hours in a six-month period, and you have to monitor the moving six-month period to make sure that they don't become full-time people which happens after the 1,000 hours. Two, a person can't average more than 30 hours a week in a 12-month period going from April 1st to March 31st, or else they become eligible for health benefits. And so you need to manage, and we have 75 part-time people, and you need to monitor each of these people every week to see where they fit within those two parameters, whether or not you can call upon them to work whether or not you, it's cheaper now to afford to pay somebody overtime, is it cheaper to have somebody full time? And although the problem itself of staffing a nursing home is seemingly simple, filling the positions is not quite as simple as one might imagine. And so I don't think, I'm not sure what kind of a job we're doing on this. I don't think we do a very good job of doing an analysis of the problem. I think you know my focus has been at the moment on increasing revenue and finishing the physical plant, but I think next year it has to be focused on how we staff and how we and what that costs us. Twice, sir. Raise a, a follow-up, but is Larry, as you look out to uh, the fiscal 18 budget, then do you think you've adequately funded the overtime line? I think because I think I funded enough money in the, the 100s overall. line. Okay, all right. The 100s line, like you're going to be short since you're not you're voting on this, and actually nobody mentioned this in the entire budget process, one of 3.6%. You would think there would be enough money there, wouldn't you? I think there's enough money. Okay, so Mr. Drake? Yeah, um, yeah I, think, I think ultimately the big picture here is the Witherill is overspending its budget for nursing by $465,000. That's what's in this $485,000 before us today. You know, in, the, in, in your budget... That's, that's not clear. That's a true statement because it encompasses more than nursing. Well, that's fine. Here it's listed as nursing. The 100s? Uh, yep. In, 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 in the, that the, should be awful the time thing that's before us to vote upon, it says nursing. <laughs> So, you know, in, 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 in the Withrow budget, there's about 70 object descriptions, you know, overtime, custodial supplies, interest fuel, and it's two pages worth, and, it costs, and it's $30 million worth of expenses. And the budget's transparent, which allows everybody to see down to the level of those 70 object codes. And, and so it's a little, the way the question gets presented to us is, uh, are we being asked to say that, that the line item detail in the 70 account codes doesn't really matter because the Witherell is authorized to sort of ignore the categories and move the money among them, when they move the money from A when they overspend B? Um, you know, the question is to us as a policy question, is it a transparent budget to the details or is it one big opaque code of $30 million that we draw from? You know, if this were a small innocuous budget modification, we'd approve it easily. But $465,000 is an indicator of a larger issue. As you say, the biggest category of expense at the Witherell is labor, and it's too large. That's been the Witherell's problem for decades, long before you joined the board. So this poses to us a policy question. It's just kind of not your affair. It's a policy question for the 12 of us. How do we treat these things? Well, let me give you an analogy. You know, if the fire department came to us and said, uh, this year we overspent the labor budget by several hundred thousand dollars, but water was cheap this year and we underspent the water budget, so the overspending on the labor is okay, right? Exactly what's um, You know, the fire chief wouldn't think of proposing that. 
because it would be a non-starter among us. Is the withdrawal different? You know, I, I think we have to remember that in the 2017 budget, the allocation of the Witherall's expenses was reduced by $2.3 million, a benefit to the Witherall at the expense of the rest of the town budget. This accounting change improved nothing real. The intent was to present the Witherall on a marginal cost basis, not a full cost basis. But we remember that every other department in the town is accounted for on a full cost basis. So this transfer today is a second opportunity to employ accounting modifications to make the Witherall's overspending look better or to make it invisible. And so I'm pleased, I recognize the difficulties of managing the nursing home and that you're new and the systems are new and the contract is up in the air. We appreciate the challenges, and I, for one, am glad you're the chairman. God bless you and give you energy and smarts, which you have. But uh, I'm not gonna vote for this, uh, because I think instead what is needed is to face the fact of the Witherall's overspending in a way that's transparent and realistic. Ms. Oberlander, followed by Mr. Rimmer. Well, I should probably wait for the chair to respond to my colleague, Mr. Drake, and I, I, I feel that I do have to respond. Um, while I appreciate your concern about, in some sense, the budget irregularities that we find ourselves faced with due to a transition in finance departments and um, a learning curve that is very challenging. I don't think the analogy of a full service skilled nursing care facility for the town's frailest um, individuals with regulatory requirements of staffing to our fire department is is um, and a, a comparable situation. So I would just um, call that out and suggest that um, they, the Witherall does need to take a closer look to their deployment of staff as well as their, their on-call personnel for call-outs and other um, unanticipated personnel issues, uh, some of which can be predictable over time and some of which cannot. Um, I do think that the most important thing that we're providing here is skilled care to the frail elderly and um, a cutback. Most, most businesses operating this way when they're faced with a budget shortfall will end up cutting some other kind of service, not their nursing care per se, in order to find the money. So in fact, this kind of shifting allocation is exactly what they will do to provide for the required care, in my opinion. Mr. Reamer? A uh, few things. <clears throat> uh, number one, I thought that uh, Mr. Simon gave us a very convincing um, uh, scenario of exactly how complicated it is to run a nursing home. Uh, I extract from this a sense that I feel like the process of trying to improve revenues and the operation of the nursing home is increasing dramatically. I think I'm getting the impression that there's some improvements still to be made in the budgeting process. And I look forward uh, to uh, those improvements being made. I think I accomplish absolutely nothing by voting against this matter and leaving this nursing home with a $485,000 hole in their budget. I don't know how they're supposed to accommodate that. What, shut down some wing or something and try and find some other home that'll take a, a group of their patients? I mean, that's not a solution to anything. And lastly, I mean, it was interesting, the analogy that Mr. Drake 
picked because I think it was just about a year ago, I believe it was the June meeting a year ago, that Assistant Chief Bob Kick came to us and, in <laughs> fact, had overspent the salary line and, in fact, was dipping into the unused funds from the water account. This is not an unusual thing, and exactly the analogy that Mr. Drake was picking, in fact, happened to us just 11 months ago. But I think the bottom line here really is that I think there's rightfully some dissatisfactions with some of the things we're hearing, but disapproving the $485,000 hole in their budget is not a solution to anything. It's just an immense operational problem uh, for this facility if we don't approve it. Well, we wouldn't be able to operate. We wouldn't have money to pay salaries in June. Ms. Tarkington? Yeah, I just comment that, that this is money already spent, and so therefore, um, I really don't think we have some of the alternatives that, you know, we might have otherwise, you know, at the beginning of a year or at the beginning of a budget. But I certainly think that it does mean that the Witherall Board needs to give its budget uh, of the upcoming year more scrutiny. So I will be approving this. I appreciate that. But I don't want you to leave anybody with the impression that we spent money that we weren't authorized to spend. We haven't overspent our budget as of today. Through, through the budget process, there have been comments, statements that have been, they grew life and they, they went on their own way. And I, and I, I think that's a, a point well taken. Okay, before I call on the item, thank you, we're here to help. We. Yep. That's it. Yes. Okay. Item NW2. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Abstaining? I'm going to mark that as 1110. That item is carried. Brings us to the next item, SC17. Ms. Tarkington, will you move that item for us? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Next item is SE 17 uh, for the first selectment department. The amount is, well, it's for a settlement between Shimchuk and the, uh, versus the town of Greenwich, a legal settlement, and the amount is um, $60,000. Okay, that, that item is on behalf of a committee, or actually be two committees, so I don't need a second. Committee reports, uh, law committee, then budget committee? Yes, the, the law committee um, approved this settlement 2-0. Um, um, this uh, legal action was taken against the town of Greenwich for an incident that occurred on July 6, 2013 at Greenwich Point Park shortly after the conclusion of the annual fireworks event. The plaintiff, Marie Shimshuk, a Norwalk resident, is a town employee who has uh, worked for the Greenwich Public Schools. Um, Ms. Shimshuk was 49 years of age at the time. Um, she claims that she was injured at approximately 10.15 p.m. when she fell in an in a, um, unlit area near the South uh, Concession restrooms shortly after the town fireworks had ended. Um, although there was residual lighting in parts of the cookout area, the plaintiff claims that there was none in the area near the restrooms where she was headed. And again, this was approved by the law committee. Mr. Lash? The Budget Committee took this item up and approved it unanimously. Uh, we had the same testimony from the Law Committee. A few questions for the Law Department representatives and, uh, and no disagreement with, with going ahead and approving this item. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One. Abstaining? That item has passed 11-1. Zero. Thank you. Moving on to SE18, Ms. Tarkington. Uh, yes. Um, SE18 uh, was for Selectman's Office. It's a settlement between Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and Subregor um, of uh, uh, of uh, Zanorski versus the town of Greenwich. Um, again, this was a settlement um, approved by the Law Committee 2-0. Um, it relates to property damage uh, in, in the amount of $17,000 um, plus. Um, the matters arise out of a motor vehicle accident on the morning of June 9, 2015. Daniel Martin was an electrical inspector for the town, was en route to an inspection on Weaver Street, and was driving a town-owned Ford Escape. 
the accident between his vehicle and the plaintiff's vehicle occurred just as he was about to make a left turn onto the driveway at 68 Weaver Street. Airbags deployed in both vehicles, which sustained subs extensive damage and were subsequently declared a total loss. Um, the plaintiff's vehicle, um, which was a 2014 Toyota uh, Camry, was insured by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company, which has asserted a property damage claim in the amount of $17,183.61. The total amount of damages was actually in the amount of $21,703, and it was reduced by the salvage amount of $4,863. Again, approved by the Law Committee. 2-0? Two 2-0, zero. Two zero. correct. Mr. Lash? Uh, as with the prior item, the uh, Budget Committee took this up and uh, had the report of the Law Committee and a couple of questions for the representative of the Law Department. Uh, there was no controversy about the issue, and it was approved 4-0. Okay, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That item is carried, 12 0, zero. <coughs> That moves us to LA, uh, LAW-1. Mr. Lash, on behalf of the Budget Committee, get that moved. Right. So this is a motion on behalf of the Law Department, uh, as it was heard, just to be clear, by the uh, Budget Committee the evening it heard it, it was a $100,000 item, which subsequently has been increased to $200,000. The uh, Budget Committee approved the $100,000 item unanimously, and I'll move the $200,000. Uh, I have a motion to for the amended amount of two hundred thousand, do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of the? I'm sorry. Discussion. Discussion on the amendment to go from one hundred to two hundred. Uh, respectfully, I think, as I recall, uh, it came to the budget committee as a hundred thousand. We discussed it at the budget committee. It was discussed at the budget committee that, in fact, probably the need was two hundred thousand. And I have a recollection that there was a motion at the budget committee that was unanimously passed to increase it to two hundred thousand. And that the budget committee voted on it as two hundred thousand four zero. Okay, thank you. Then that item won't need a second. That'll be on behalf of the budget committee. Committee report. So the first hundred thousand dollars was uh, described at the budget committee meeting as being related primarily to extra outside services to supplement. The department's personnel, several of whom had uh, absences due to health questions. Uh, the remainder of that item and the additional $100,000 has to do with the town's recently renewed uh, legal activity with Eversource having to do with providing power to the western side of town through uh, the installation of a substantial amount of new electrical infrastructure. Uh, as most of you probably recall, when this item came up some time ago, the town thought that the proposal from Eversource was um, bad in many ways, not the least of which was the use of high pressure uh, insulated lines and as a result of the town's effort in that item uh, the siting council actually rejected the proposal that was made by Eversource but encouraged them to revisit the item. Subsequently there were numerous discussions between Eversource and town personnel and then somewhat to the town's surprise Eversource proposed the item which is now being pursued by Eversource back at the Siting Council. The town has substantial objections to this approach and will probably end up incurring legal expenses at least as great if not greater than it incurred last time in order to find a solution which serves Eversource's and the town's need for adequate electrical service while at the same time not creating an environment that is in the judgment of many people involved in the town uh, unacceptable and unnecessary as alternatives exist. 
So I have to say that with regard to the remainder of this $200,000, the town attorney's concern is that this will not turn out to be enough money, but it is enough money to get the process moving. Thank you, discussion. Um, this is a, a very interesting one. This is very important to our residents. Uh, originally, it was underground power cabling, and it was concern and going through the residential area, and then it changed into 180-foot high towers over parkland and over some of the, the neighborhoods in town. And when when the board of selectmen first entered into this, I don't think they were I don't think they were as confident they would have the progress. And we won the first case on this, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have the two assistant town attorneys here. So we won the first case, and now <laughs> we're back again negotiating with Eversource, but I think this is a very important item for our community and I'm, I'm hoping we're successful. So, further discussion? Ms. Krummick? Um Chairman Mason, my, my understanding is that there is some hope that they can get Eversource to put run it under the roadway in the park as opposed to putting lines over the parkway so there's a initiative to try to move it in that direction but who knows we I think there was a lot of surprise that we won the first motion before the siting authority so whether we'll be as successful the second time they don't know but we definitely I'm all in favor of having outside counsel that that have done these types of cases in the past and and will support the town's position with no, a strong I, I, legal I definitely, I hope we continue support. on this and I hope we're successful. Uh, Ms. Tarkington? I'll just add that um, not this larger amount that came up at the budget committee uh, meeting, but um, the law committee did support this item with a 2-0 vote. Okay, thank you. Okay, all those in favor of LAW-1? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That item is carried 12-0-0. Continuing on item number four, the assessor's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and fellow members of the BT. I'd like to present the assessor's report for May 2017. Uh, first of all, we are currently preparing for the July 2017 tax bills. Uh, we are updating the addresses and ownership, and after you set the mill rate this evening, um, we will be applying senior credits and hopefully we'll be getting the file to the tax collector's office in the near in the next week or so. Um, as to the 2020 revaluation, uh, the field inspections, we pr uh, presented the press release at the Selectman's April 27th meeting. Um, it was just more for informational purposes only and it is, uh, we've actually s have committed to starting that process on June 12th. I'm away the week prior because I have to go to assessor school this year. So, <laughs> so I will, I want, and I want to be here when we start doing that. So we're going to start uh, full force on uh, June 12th. And hopefully we'll be able to c get to the 3,300 parcels measured and listed this summer. Okay. Um, thankfully we have an offer out for uh, filling Bob Shipman's, the assistant assessor's position. Um, assuming they pass the physical and the background check, which I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that they shall, he shall. Okay. Um, hopefully we'll be starting on May 22nd. So I'll be look, we'll look forward to that and I'll be introducing that uh, person in the next June EET. Fantastic. Okay. Any questions? Ms. Um, I, I had forwarded a question mm -hmm. uh, earlier today. I was just uh, curious, your report indicated there are 379 applications as of last week sometime for the senior tax credit. If you could put that number into context, what, uh, how many applica or how many credits did we give out last year? So with the senior program, uh, the seniors are required to file every other year. So we would be looking at 2016 and comparing them with the 2014. Um, as far as the state program is concerned, we're about the same. We had 147 in uh, in 2014. We have about 100. We have a couple more because when I put these numbers together, it was a few days ago. So we're at about 150. We do have a bit more um, local 
but we also f that have actually applied this year, but we have also lost some from the prior year. So I think we will probably have roughly around six, 600 to 610. We should still have ample funds in the local um, program. Last year we only used $822,000 of that. I believe we have $950,000 this year, and the overall, the actual amount of credits have not changed that much, so we should have ample money for that. How much, How much did we budget this year, Roland? Do you, is it 950 that we budgeted for the year we're in right now? Yes, it is. It's 950. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, Lauren, you, you said that the total number of these applicants, assuming they all are um, in order, would be how many? How much? Um, I don't know the exact amount yet. I can't figure that out until you set, set the mill rate. Oh, of course not. Okay. So, but it's about the same. It's a little bit. There's a f about uh, about 860 again. Well, no, it was 580. We're about 600, 610 or so. So there, sh we should still be okay, as far as our. Well, I, yeah, my, my my view of it actually is the opposite way around. We're budgeting 950, oh, but we we're but right. we're setting the parameters of what we allow on these exemptions to be uh, so that we're actually only using 610 each year. No, no, 822,000. Oh, 822. Right. And we budget 950. Right. Thank you. I'll do my. Mr. Norton, I'll do my usual <laughs> series of questions. <clears throat> Congratulations on resolving the 2013 <clears throat> four cases in 2013. Apparently, those in 2000, the year before, prior year 2012 must be particularly uh, onerous or uh, challenging. Actually, that's the um, we're in trial on those two. Okay. And we started the trial back in April, and we are continuing it. We didn't finish in two days. So we have another four days of trial scheduled in June. We couldn't finish it in two days. It's, it, it's going to go on for a few. It's spread out over time. Yep. The court didn't have enough dates scheduled at that point in time. When do you think you'll be resolving those? Thank you. In June. Yes, I would assume. Yes, we have. Um, we actually have four dates set. Four days set aside in June. If we can't finish it in four days, I think the judge. <laughs> probably settle it for us. Thank you. <laughs> okay, can I get a motion to accept the assessor's report? I move that we accept the assessor's report. And I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That is carried. Thank you. Thank you so much. Where's my agenda? That takes us to item number five, the controller's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, BET members. Um, one quick change on the front page. The uh, the BET Nathaniel Witherell Strategic Planning Committee. That next meeting, which was for Wednesday, was canceled today. Um, and then the next one is tentatively uh, scheduled for June. And I'm not sure at this point if that one will be uh, canceled. So that's the, the one change to the controller's report. You all have a copy. I'll answer any questions uh, on any of the topics covered in the controller's report. May I address the, that point about the next meeting uh, in June? We're going to try to change the date this evening. And we'll make an announcement tomorrow. Okay. And uh, Pete, I had a question. You're talking about the movement forward in terms of the retirement board outsourcing the management of the pension fund. Can you give us some sense of timing? I understand it's in with the law department now as to sort of when that might possibly come to the BET as a decision. I'll tell you what I know, but I don't agree with it, with that will actually happen. Okay. The plan is to actually try to have a completed contract so that the BET at this level, this is after the law committee and after IAC, votes on a contract. I don't see it happening uh, that quick, but there's a lot of email traffic going back and forth and there's a lot of cooperation between our attorney, meaning the retirement board's attorney, Mr. Smoot, Ted Smoot, and Gene McLaughlin. And it's running very smoothly. They dug up the old Russell contract from the 1980s, uh, and there's a lot of cooperation between both sides. So to answer your question, uh, they're trying to get it to the BET for the June meeting. I'll be surprised if it gets there by July. Thank you. I see. Well, Mr. Drake? Uh, originally, I was going to – I have nothing to add to Mr. Minorsky's report and answering the question. He basically covered everything. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Uh, what my – the one thing I was going to say, just for information, everybody, 
the calendar year return of the retirement fund for calendar 2016 was 10.1%, which is, I think, in the first percentile of the comparable funds and well in excess of our 6.75% target. But Mr. Minarski covered the whole process, so nothing to add. Thank you very much. Ms. Oberlander, followed by Mr. Raymond. Um, Mr. Monarski, perhaps just because we had a little bit of a conversation back and forth at the last BET meeting, I know that your report, I noticed that your report reflected the audit committee's discussion on taking a look at whether to hire a forensic accountant to, to look at the parking services. Maybe you could just provide a little update. Uh, the BET audit committee uh, authorized us to hire RSM US LLP to conduct a forensic audit uh, of the parking services uh, division. The, um, as you all know, in the budgetary process, the BET sets aside $75,000 each year to do different studies. We, we've, we've done the, the long range planning with the Health Dimensions Group, and we did a facilities management with the uh, matrix where they were looking at Board of Ed versus, uh, and town uh, combination. So they voted on it. Uh, there's a conference call tomorrow at 3 o'clock between uh, myself, the internal auditor, and the, first, the forensic unit of uh, RSM. The auditors that you see or will see each year will not be performing the forensic uh, audit. It will be done independent of the annual audit, but it will supplement the annual audit. Uh, they have promised to come forward with a cost proposal in the next couple of weeks. And as I said earlier, we have the funds already set aside to cover a forensic audit. So what we're working on, to answer your question, uh, is developing the scope more spe specifically of what we're going to look at. Thank you. Um, I had Mr. Reamer next and Mr. Norton. Yeah, um, two distinct questions. First, on the retirement board, if uh, if we should, if we don't approve this contract at the July meeting, um, uh, uh, does that affect the commencement date of the services of Newburger Bourbon? No. The, the plan would be that they would not be starting before the fall anyway. Until you approve the uh, contract. Well, if we September. approve the contract in July, would they be able to start in July? Probably August first. In that area. And if we don't improve it until uh, September, then I guess they can't start at least until we, October. It's status quo. We just keep operating uh, as we've normally done. All right. So it, it's it's not the month is is it's not if you're getting at a special meeting in August, it's not it's not necessary. You don't think it's going to happen? Yeah. No. Okay. I wasn't planning to come back for August. Um, uh, independent question. I mean, separate subject. Um, is there any um, insurance award or benefit that's available to us to help us cover the cost of the forensic audit, quite apart from the seventy-five thousand dollars that we budget? We're in the, uh, yes. Uh, there's the we're in the process of. Um, going over um, the um, crime insurance policy, there's a $50,000 deductible. And let's just say hypothetically that we, we prove that 100, just to pick numbers, they don't mean anything. It could be a lot higher, lower. Gotcha. Let's just say that it, the audit costs $50,000, and then we determine that uh, $100,000 was uh, stolen. Of the 150 for the two, 50 is deductible. So it's it, it. So there is a deductible, but there's we could put that in as a reimbursable expense. But the cost of the forensic audit is part of the benefit that we're entitled to over and above the amount of the loss, but minus the amount of the deductible. Is that yes. it? Okay. And at this point, we don't know the amount of the loss, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Yes, um, under your cash management, uh, you had some discussions with uh, Bankwell. Are they investment grade rated? We have not gotten uh, that far yet. As far as Bankwell, we um, we met with them, uh, the treasurer, the assistant treasurer, and myself. Uh, as stated in the in the uh, report, I asked for, and they supplied qualified public depository statements that they uh, produced to the banking commission. Uh, and we told them that we would have to look at the uh, agreement, which would have to be vetted with the law department, and it would have to go through the cash resolution uh, amendment through the IAC, Investment Advisory Committee, and the BET. I don't know the answer to that because we haven't gotten that far yet. 
But but according to the resolution, they have to be. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they are. Can I get a motion to accept the controller's report? So moved. I'm sorry. I, I just was going to ask Mr. Minarski, under the other business and risk management, there was a referral to the um, Steamboat Road um, landing um, risk management study, but it mentioned that the um, the risk manager was finalizing the suggested recommendations, and I, I, I would suggest that perhaps, no perhaps it's with the department, the DPW. You get two people talking the same. I'm sorry. There were no recommendations in that report. There were seven suggestions. This is the one that's tracked. Field. Sorry? We're just talking about the, um, the road oh, street I, oh, field. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. It's a right. combination. Yes. Different, different, okay. different. Okay. There were two, two, okay. yeah, we, yeah, we two safety uh, yeah. uh, studies. Okay. So yeah. One was William Street and, and Byron. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I get a motion to accept the controller's report? So moved. Second. Discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining, that is carried. Brings us to item number six, treasurer's report. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Treasurer's report is carried. Turn the page. BET standing committee reports. Um, <laughs> nothing, re liaison, Mr. Drake, you covered retirement with Mr. Minarski? Yes. Special project teams, new business, uh, approval of the 2017-18 budget resolutions, and I'm going to, who am I going to call on that? <laughs> Maybe the law committee? Mr. Minarski, oh. better yet, Mr. Geiger, <laughs> can you, we have a, we have the resolution, and it's modified as per the action of the RTM with the, a new borrowing number, if I'm not mistaken? There's only two changes in the head and in the body. It reflects the um, hundred thousand uh, dollar deduction, uh, deduction for the fire study. So it was the fire study, correct? Yes. I move that we accept the changes as proposed. <coughs> Seconded. Moved by Ms. Tarkington. Seconded by Mr. Raymer. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That item is carried. Twelve zero zero. Approval of mill rates for 2017-18 fiscal year general fund, and I think we have a resolution here. Uh, I'll read the resolution if you think that's right. Please, Mr. Uh, so the resolution, which should be in front of everyone here, for the resolution for general fund tax, uh, resolved that a tax at the rate of 11.369 mills on the dollar B, and the same is hereby levied and laid upon the assessment list of the town of Greenwich, last completed, as the tax for said town's general fund for the succeeding fiscal year to wit for the fiscal year July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. And the second re resolution is resolved that the chairman and clerk of the Board of Estimate Taxation shall forthwith file a certificate of the levying and laying of such tax with the town clerk, who shall record such certificate in the town meeting record book and obtain a receipt from the town clerk that this has been done. Is that it? Uh, can I get a second on that? Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Mr. Blankley. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to propose uh, an amendment to this motion, if I may. Please. The uh, proposal would be that we tax at a rate of 11.425 mills on the dollar. Okay. Uh, be, uh, can I get a second please, first? Please give the number one more Second. Time. Second? Uh, 11.425. Second, uh, moved by Mr. Blankley, <laughs> seconded by Ms. Crummick. Just a quick clarification. That would restore the, as we talked through the budget, of 1.99%. That's correct, yes. Okay. Not the 1.49 percent that is in the resolution draft. Indeed. Okay. So we have a motion to amend that resolution to equal 11.425 mills. Uh, discussion on it, Mr. Blankley. So, Mr. Chairman, um, well, let me preface my remarks first of all by saying that the uh, budget as a whole that we presented to the RTM uh, preserves town services. Uh, at a level that I think we would wish to see uh, in our town. Um, we, uh, as a full BET, approved this, this budget and an increase of 1.99%, uh, recognizing that within that number there was a potential saving of uh, $2 million on health care costs. 
Now, as we know, this went before the RTM, and this amount was taken out of the budget that uh, they put forward. I would suggest that this board is the one that has uh, ultimate financial authority, and it is incumbent on our board to display fiscal rectitude when it comes to budgeting. In, in all my years of corporate life, budgeting has never been a, a one-year matter. It has been a multi-year matter. And it seemed to me that this was an idea that we, as a BT as a whole, when we put forward our 1.99% increase, uh, there was concurrence with this, this view. Uh, it seems to me that our intent was to build reserves, build up our, our fund balance. It's already strong, but this item would have made it stronger. Second of all, that in terms of the way that we set the mill rate from one year to another, it has always been our policy. Well, not always, but at least for the past 10 or a dozen years, if not more, it's been our policy to have a low and predictable um, mill rate increase. Uh, in other words, uh, we had in there some attempt to avoid spikiness in mill rate setting. So. Um, I would propose, therefore, that we restore our um, mill rate to 199 per cent, that we improve our fund balance, uh, and that this is the right way to do budgeting, is the right way, as this board, as a finance board, to think about uh, how we manage the town's finances. Um, I recognize the um, opinion expressed by the RTM, but I will put it this way. Uh, I think uh, if we went along with this reduction, it would be the tail wagging the dog. It would be the RTM tail wagging the BET dog. That is my proposal. Thank you. Discussion? Oh. Um, Mr. Lash? So I'm, I'm sympathetic to the notion that having reserves in the face of the uncertainty coming out of Hartford is a good idea. Um, but I'm a little more sympathetic to the notion that the RTM uh, ultimately is by charter the final say on what should be in the town budget. Uh, now it is true, and, and you're exactly right, Mr. Blankley, we can decide as the finance board that the RTM has decided what should be in the budget, but we can decide what should be in the reserves. And the effect of, of your proposed change would be to uh, put some money back in the reserves that thinking about next year's budget, I'd probably be more comfortable having. Uh, and I think um, the risk we run here, though it's not a large risk, is that um, we will have misled the taxpayers with, let's call it a 1.49 percent increase this year, and maybe if we had, ex if we accept your proposal um, next year, we could have another increase that was on the order of 2 percent, whereas if we go with the 1.49, and some of the things we're concerned about coming out of Hartford come home to roost. Uh, we'll find ourselves then in a situation where we will be looking at a 2.5 or 3 or 3.5 percent mill rate increase next year. Um, having said all that, I think sometimes um, it's useful to respect the process as laid out in the charter, and I'm not suggesting you're being disrespectful. I'm not. Um, and let the RTM have what it's asked for and hope that that works out. If it does, that'll be good for all of us because we're all taxpayers. If it doesn't, um, there'll, be a, there'll be some more pain uh, for all of us to, uh, to deal with next year. So obviously, the numbers you're talking about are the numbers that this BET put forward when it approved the budget in March. Uh, so I think it's safe to say we all have those concerns. Uh, on the other hand, I think the RTM has had its say here. In fairness to the RTM, 
uh, and I know you know this, so I'm just repeating it for the benefit of the watching audience. Um, the biggest part of the, re the change that they made is uh, recognizing that there will be more health care savings than we knew when we voted as a body on the budget in March because after that time, some other unions agreed to go into the state health care plan. So the biggest piece of what they're taking away, uh, what the RTM was taking away was, in fact, just correcting it, sort of a Scribner's error. We weren't in a position to know at that time what we know now. Um, but having said that, still, I take your point about making sure we have adequate reserves. I think we, I think we have adequate reserves. I'm not overly concerned, uh, and so I would urge that we leave this alone. Uh, let the changes that the RTM proposed uh, serve to reduce the mill rate to increase to the 1.49 percent, or the 11. Point, I can't read it without my glasses. 36. 369. Uh, 369. Uh, as reflected, so I would suggest we reject that change much as I like it. <laughs> Mr. Raymer? Um, I'm speaking up just because I had circulated an email uh, among the members of the board. Uh, I will uh, not vote in favor of the 1.99 percent. I will vote in favor of the 1.49, and I will not be making uh, a motion of my own. Uh, to increase it by 1.7 percent uh, to 11.392 mill rate, and I'm uh, changing my position uh, in large part because I was hearing some updated information uh, through the finance department uh, that increasingly makes my concern um, less and less important, and for the, all those reasons, I'm going to support the 1.49 percent. Um. I had some comments for my chairman's report, but they seem to fit here. You know, the budget process this year was very in-depth. The RTM, I'm actually very proud. We always look ahead. We always plan, and the RTM is starting to do the same thing. And if you look at the votes on the RTM, there were people who were willing to leave that health care savings in the budget for a fund balance next year, anticipating next year's increase. I, I was very proud of that. It did, they didn't vote that way, but the budget we've sent in this year I think we, we went overboard on transparency, which needed to be done, cooperation, communications, and in some case, good trust. I mean, the, the new lab school appropriation was a prime example of that. But the RTM, I believe we have always set the mill rate to their actions, and I think we should continue to do that. Um, I don't see anything that's occurred recently that should, you know, that w should change our expectations or theirs of what they should get. And I think we should match with that. And I'll have more later in my chairman's report, but I think in general, I think the RTM, you know, I was looking through the votes. They supported the budget we sent them. And, you know, we need to recognize that. And they're expecting a about a point and a half mill rate increase. And I think that's, if they get that, I think that's, that's one step towards, you know, continuing that relationship, which we all value. So it's just my two cents on that. Okay, so on Mr. Blankley's motion, motion to amend to a, a mill rate of 11. Mike, I, I just wanted to make a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. That I, I really am concerned that we are putting a mill rate that's low this year, but it's going to spike considerably next year. And I wonder if that does a, a service to our taxpayers. Um, I, it just strikes me that with everything we know about what's happening at the state level, that we're not actually preparing for the long term here if, if we go with the 1.49. So with that concern, I will support the 1.99. Okay. Okay, further? Okay, so the, the, I'm going to call this the blankly motion to amend. So if you vote in favor of this, you're, su you're supporting the 1.99 percent. If you vote against it, you're, you're voting to not support the 1.99 uh, increase amendment. All those in favor? One, two. All those opposed? Abstaining? 
I'm going to show that as 2, 10, 0. That brings us back to the original motion. Further discussion? Ms. Oberlander? So I agree with um, the comments of all of my colleagues on responding to the RTM and their participation in the budget process. As we move forward from tonight setting the mill rate to preparing the budget guidelines for next year, I think there are some lessons that we've learned by listening to the RTM uh, and our department heads that they take our guidelines seriously and that um, we don't want to be back trading necessarily once they've met guidelines. So I would just ask that as we start to move in that direction, we start to talk again about what this budget is as a holistic document, not just the numbers of it and the the percentage increases, but that it represents a composition of services that we provide to our town residents, many of whom rely on the services that they receive from this town, and it encourages people to move here as well. So just a reminder, I think that we, we're all cognizant of it, that it's not just the numbers, but it's the quality of life that we've come to count on. Thank you. For the discussion, Ms. Tarkington? Um, but, but I, I would just comment here that we need to watch our mill rates and mill rate increases, the total taxes, um, very closely because the values of our real estate really are the reciprocal of our um, overall taxes. And I think that, you know, everyone on the board is doing that. Um, but I, nevertheless, I think that we have to keep remembering that point here and, and um, maintaining a... Uh, lower increase in the tax rate is important to the home values that are so important to each and every every one of us. I just also like to comment on the um, adequate reserves issue because um, one additional thing that we'll see move into the um, fund balance is the um, differential between um, what we had budgeted on the revenue side for um, you know from the revenues from our um, grand list um, uh, post the BAA and um, the actuals. And that differential is about, you know, 158 million, which basically um, is about a million eight. So, you know, sort of countering some of the comments we've heard, um, we'll see um, additional um, revenues come in to support the adequate reserves that we all want in the fund balance as we continue to enter um, more and more difficult times. Ms. Weisler. I was just going to make a few brief comments um, about the sort of looking out to next year as we're talking, we're sort of where we are today and looking out to next year. And certainly this year, as we all know, we benefited from migration to the state partnership plan and kudos to the town and to um, Alcava and, you know, finance for and HR for achieving that. I think that's really significantly reduced our cost structure this year and a s benefit that we'll enjoy certainly for several years to come. But I think beyond that, there were proactive steps that the town has taken in the past year through the hiring freeze and through the implementation of Lean Six Sigma to improve efficiency and lower costs. And as we out look out next year, I mean, clearly we know that labor costs are going up, so it will be critical for the town to redouble these efforts um, because of the higher labor costs that we're looking at. So given that, I, I sort of think we're, you know, it's sort of hard to think we're starting in next year's budget already as we finish up this one, but, you know, sort of, you know, basically moving into that mode of sort of laying the groundwork for what can we do in the face of higher labor costs to prove efficiency and lower costs. Okay, all those in favor of the uh, original motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? 12 0, zero. There you go. Yeah. That brings us to the next resolution for the sewer maintenance fund. Mr. Drake, do you have that? Yes, I do. Um, the Resolve that a tax at the rate of 0 0.615 mills on the dollar be, and the same is hereby levied and laid upon the assessment list of the town of Greenwich last completed, as the tax for said town's sewer maintenance fund for the succeeding fiscal year to wit for the fiscal year July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. 
resolved that the chairman and clerk of the Board of Estimate and Taxation shall forthwith file a certificate of the levying and laying of such tax with the town clerk who shall record such certificate in the town meeting record book and obtain a receipt from the town clerk that this has been done. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That item is carried 12-0. And there's one other. Mr. Drake, you're up. The Sewer Improvement Fund. Resolved that a tax at the rate of 0 0.034 mills on the dollar B, and the same is hereby levied and laid upon the assessment list of the town of Greenwich last completed as the tax for said town's sewer improvement fund for the succeeding fiscal year to wit for the fiscal year July 1st, 2017 through to June 30th, 2018. Further resolved that the chairman and clerk of the Board of Estimate and Taxation shall forthwith file a certificate of the levying and laying of such tax with the town clerk who shall record such certificate in the town meeting record book and obtain a receipt from the town clerk that this has been done. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Tarkington. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining. Thank you. BET meeting schedule changes. This is for July 13th and December 14th of this year. Everybody mark their calendars. I'm going to give Elaine the okay on this. We're okay on this? Just checking one more time? Yes. And then August. Mr. Raymer, can you just let me know the dates of our special meeting? When are you going to be away in August? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I, I, I'm going to have to check to see when the audit committee is planning to do their next safety inspection on the Steamboat Pier. Uh. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so we're okay with those changes. Um, I'm going to stick one other item in under new business because we have a volunteer in our ranks, uh, Mr. Turner. Thank you for volunteering. You have no idea what you just did. Um, the first the, he's hearing of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he heard about it 20 minutes ago. The uh, Board of Ed is doing a, a group for a feasibility study um, for the Cardinal Stadium. The uh, money was in this year's budget. And I think they'll have a, a few meetings looking for input and some of the other issues. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Good luck. And um, I'll let I'll send an email. I think Ms. Oberlander already let um, uh, Mr. Madden over there have an idea that you're coming. So thank you very much. Okay, good. Old business, I have nothing. Um, yes, before I get to minutes, there are a few announcements here that have been handed out, some press release, some other stuff uh, from the Office of the First Selectman. So if everybody, I just want to make sure everybody got a copy of that. Um, okay. Uh, minutes. The first set of minutes is April 21st for the GEMS tour. So on that set of minutes, um, there are seven who can vote on it. I think you know who you are. I can give the list. Uh, it's Ms. Crummick, Mr. Lash, Ms. Moriarty, Ms. Oberlander, Mr. Raymer, Ms. Starkton, and Ms. Weisler, who are all present. So you have these brief minutes before you. Uh, I'll make a motion for them. You want a motion from us? Please. Can I, I, I would move that. Sorry, Mrs. Tarkin is going to move that. I'll move that we approve the minutes of the April 21st, 2017 GEMS tour. I second that. Moved and seconded by Mr. Amer. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that would be seven. Uh, seven opposed? Nothing. And abstaining? I've got to abstain. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So that's 705. Yep. That was a, a tour meeting and. Not all of us went. Thank you. That brings us to the minutes for our regular April 24th meeting. Can I get a motion? So moved. Moved by, moved by Mr. Raymer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Crummick. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? That item carries 12-0-0. Mr. Drake, do you have anything else before us this uh, evening? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Norton? No, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, nothing to add other than the fact that, uh, as many of you know, I spend a great deal of time leading a fundraising effort for the Western Greenwich Civic Center, which is now known the Bentheim Western Greenwich Civic Center. And uh, I thought the article that Mr. Horton had uh, yesterday in his column was often an intriguing challenge to the town, and uh, I was just intrigued by that. Huh. Interesting. Um, first of all, I... Um, Mr. Minarski, Mr. Geiger, um, please clear your calendars for next Tuesday. 
email to follow up. Um, we're going to let you have a chance to haze us. No, no we're going to see if we can see if we can ha uh, grab a bite. I, I, I really, you know, I said it at the RTM, and I can't tell you the work the finance department and the two of you have done. The hours of meetings that you had, forget with our membership, but reaching out to all the R other RTM committee members, and uh, obviously they all gave you, you know, high marks and. It must, it shows because if we look at the budget, so I really, on behalf of all of us, I can't thank you enough. I really can't. <laughs> um, the budget, you know, you know, I look back and I, I had mentioned some stuff about maybe doing a budget debrief and I'm gonna to talk to Mr. Lash, uh, meeting all the boards and commissions. I, I had mentioned that I had met with all of the boards and commissions and some of them I had never met. Not the department heads. We were in this room and I was thinking, uh, seeing about doing something where we could all participate and talk to them and let them know you know many of these boards and commissions work with each other but maybe we can find some improvement there um i probably should apologize to some of you i think i pushed a little bit during february and march and april and may but i think we we got through and i think everybody should be i haven't seen a, a budget like this come from the BET in a while where really everybody was on board with the challenges and dealing with the reduced revenues and the, the threats of more. And I, I just think everybody should be really proud on the, on the board for that. So I, I really have my, my thoughts on that. And um, we have one more meeting. We have a very important meeting next month. Uh, it's project, capital project closeout. That'll be a very interesting meeting. Um, the RTM closes this Friday, so I don't, there'll be no other interim appropriations for a year end closeout. And then we start that process so I just want to really thank everybody everybody really I, I said it at the RTM our attendance if it wasn't for the chairman who missed the day we were literally a hundred percent I haven't seen that and I've been following the BET now for 14 years 15 years so that's a, a compliment to everybody so I thank you everyone Mr. Chairman I move we adjourn I second motion. Thank you, everyone.